Assalamu alaikum, it's Tim here from Urban Dunia and thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, before we get started today, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at which parts of Pakistan to visit and when. Um, Pakistan is a fairly large country and it has lots and lots of different types of climates in different parts of the country. So let's begin in the north with one of the most touristed areas. Most visitors to Pakistan start or finish their their journeys in the central province of Punjab. Broadly speaking, the most comfortable times to visit are March and October. From April through to mid-July, most of the country bakes. Initially, it's fairly dry heat, but then from July through to September, the monsoon turns the whole place into a steam bath. But if it is the famous Pakistani mangoes that you're after, then you have to be there in July. From mid-November, the nights in Lahore and Islamabad start to get quite chilly, and by January a lot of the country is actually quite cold. February days are a bit warmer, but it's only in March that you can really begin to depend on comfortably cool nights and not too hot days. There's a bit of regional variation in this. Islamabad and Peshawar in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa are a bit cooler than Lahore, and their winters start a bit earlier and finish a bit later. And Multan is generally hotter than Lahore, so their summers start a bit earlier and finish a bit later. However, these are very broad strokes, and in terms of climate, Pakistan is a very diverse country. If you're planning to head to the mountains in the north of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa or indeed up to Gilgit Baltistan, then you'll need to plan things a little bit differently. The best time to be there is from May to September because places like Upper Hunza, Naran, Babusar Top and parts of the Chitral Valley are snowed in from late November until early May, sometimes even later. DSI Plains really only opens for about two months a year between mid-July and mid-September. Gilgit City, Chitral Town, Skardu and Hunza are all accessible right through the winter, but access can be quite tricky and on a daily basis the temperatures often drop below zero. On the other hand, if you're heading to the south, Sindh, then winter is probably the best time to visit places like Karachi, Mohenjo-daro, uh, Sewan Sharif, uh, Hyderabad and Sakhir. These places never really get that cold. In April, the temperatures regularly get to 40 degrees Celsius. And in June, some of these towns are actually some of the hottest places on the planet, with temperatures regularly topping 50 degrees Celsius. The good news is that Sindh doesn't really experience the monsoon the same way that the north of the country does. So that means that you don't get the humidity that comes along with it. Karachi and Hyderabad are often blessed in summer with a very welcome sea breeze, which provides respite that the northern cities can't even dream of. The downside to having a weaker monsoon is that Sindh doesn't really start to cool down until late October. And it's not as if Karachi never sees rain either. In fact, just this August gone, um, the whole city of Karachi flooded after a freak downpour. Baluchistan's weather is a mixed bag. On one hand, it's similar to Sindh, with its baking hot summers and little or no respite from a monsoon, while Baluchistan's winters are a mixed bag. The coastal areas are pleasantly mild to warm in January, similar to Karachi, while the further you go inland, the higher the altitude. The mountains near Quetta are often dusted with snow in winter. The other main consideration in planning when to come to Pakistan is planning around the country's many festivals. You might want to avoid being in Pakistan during Ramadan, when it's technically illegal to eat or drink on the street during daylight hours. Ramadan in 2020 will run for approximately the whole month of May, but the date changes year to year. If you're here during Ramadan, then you'll probably be able to still eat in your room. You'll be able to, most places will offer you hotel room service during this time. And then in the evening, you can go out and enjoy the festivities. The two Eid holidays, which is Eid al-Fitr, which is the end of Ramadan, and Eid al-Adha, which will in 2020 fall in the first week of August, um, they could be interesting times to be in Pakistan, but if you're planning to head north, then you're not the only one planning to do that. In fact, millions of Pakistanis flock to the northern areas, clogging up the roads on these holidays, and sometimes the police actually have to shut roads down in order to prevent complete gridlock. That said, you might want to be in Pakistan for some of these festivals. After all, they are a spectacle. There are other festivals that you might want to be in Pakistan for as well. For example, the Chelam Joshi festival in the Kalash Valleys, which takes place in mid-May. The Urz of Lal Shabazz Kalanda in Sewan Sharif in Sindh, 
which changes the date year by year, but is currently happening in about mid-April. Eid Milad Nabi, which is the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is currently falling in early November, or any number of local festivals that happen all around the country at any time of the year. And you can check Pakistan Traveller for more details on that. Thank you very much for watching and like I said, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will be back next week.